take me on a treasure hunt. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for coming back and watching my thrift haul and see what I do with it. I am Connie from The Painted Photographer and if you would like any of these products or any of these finished items, you can visit my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. Now I'm gonna get right into my thrift haul because I know you're all excited to see it. So first thing, a brand new flower pot. It didn't have a price on it. I don't know what they charged me for it. Probably like 28 cents. I like aged terracotta pots. I don't like brand new ones. So we're gonna age this up. The next thing that we're gonna do is this crock. It has an image on all three sides and it's got this blue spongy paint that was like in the 80s. There's no marking on the bottom. This was $1.98. Have you been seeing where they put baking soda or salt wash in their paint and they make a crock a little bit more handmade? And these images are raised. So I'm going to have to use that paint process on this one so that this doesn't come through with a single coat of paint. So I'm going to make these textured and I'm going to make it look like a crock. Next up. This Wisconsin America's Dairyland milk bottle. So when I seen it in the thrift store, I had plans to put a frame on here and paint this bottle. I looked it up. It's on eBay for $7. So I'm going to leave it as is. So if you're interested in this milk bottle with the Wisconsin America's Dairyland logo on it with this cute little cow, It'll be available on my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. Did I tell you? It's 98 cents. Next up, a metal cross. This needs a little bit of a facelift, not much. It's got some really cool, ornate details to it. I really, really like it. And I like that it has the dark background. So painting this white or a green color or any color and that dark is going to come through when you go and distress it. So I can't wait to finish this one. And it does have a hole in the back for hanging. This was given to me by a friend, a copper pot. I might keep this myself. So if you, if you want this item and you don't see it listed on my website, just give me a holler because I probably don't need it. And, but so by the time this airs, hopefully, I've given it enough thought and I do list it on my website. But Copper Pot, this is quite large. It was $1.99 for this Copper Pot. It does have a little bit of patina in the inside, but it is so good. It's got some really thick handles. This is a heavy, heavy metal pot. And it's got some good bumping on the bottom of it that it's all bumped metal, which really is cool. And there's only one problem. This handle has, it's supposed to look like that. And that piece is broke off. You'd never know unless I told you. So this is a really good copper pot. It's got some fabulous patina on it. I will do nothing with this because I just love it as is. You know I like my frames, empty frames. So at the thrift store, you can buy the frames and I do like them when they're made out of solid wood and they have a hanger on them. They got the backs on them and it's got some really um, chunkiness to it, let's just say. I don't know if I'll use that glass or not. I might put something in there that I won't need the glass, but just in case it's there, and in case I put another Etsy print in there or something, and we'll just see if I get some spring vibes going where I can put something in here for spring. Then when it does have the reversible back, you can switch it out for the seasons. This was 49 cents. Next up, this is a little checkerboard. This Was this folk art way back in the day, like back in the 80s? This was 99 cents. And so it has a frame on it, like it's inset and it has a black frame around the outside of it. So
So this will get revamped and something else on here. Probably stamp it with some IOD stamps or maybe a transfer. Not really sure right now. We'll see if it talks to me when it's when it's time for this project. So um, it's got the metal hanger on it. When I mean, 99 cents for this wood and a metal hanger, you can't beat it. This frame is chunky. It's solid wood. It has a hanger. So in this frame was this tin punch. Leave me a comment below if you remember these tin punches. I feel like I do, but I don't remember what you did with them. So it's tin and it's punched. Obviously this one is a basket with a couple hearts in the corners, but I can't remember what you did with it. And it has a piece of ribbon on it like that. I need a comment. I need someone to tell me what was done with these. And should I keep it? If I do keep it, what do I do with it? Let me know. Do I do that? If I didn't tell you the price already, it's 38 cents for this frame. But this basket weave. My last item is one of these shadow boxes that has up north with the state of Wisconsin painted on it. It's a really high gloss paint. Not real fond of that. I do love this type of shadow box with the slats. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this up north, sand it down, or paint over it completely. Did I say that same thing? I'm not sure if I'm going to sand it down, paint over it, or if I'm just going to white wax it, bring that sheen down a little bit and keep it as is. What would you do with it? Or it can be a double sign. It can be something on this side and holiday on this side so you can keep it up year round. Because I do like this side as well. It has a nice lip there. It was $1.49. So a pretty good deal for this wood. Wood is expensive right now. So I thought that was a really good deal. That's it for my thrift haul. I hope that you join me as I go paint them up. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that you join me as I go I hope that you join me and see what I do with them. And I'll see you at the end. First item I tackled was this Wisconsin up north sign. I sanded it all down, decided not to keep it. I like the wood. I like it to be an updated sign. So I just sanded that all down. I'm gonna use a DIY product called Dark and Decrepit. Using a mister bottle to spray your wood helps moisten the wood a little bit so the Dark and Decrepit doesn't soak in quite so much and you have a little bit more open time to spread it around. This Dark and Decrepit is a favorite product. You can see that next slat board was a little on the yellow orangey side. And when you go over top of it with the Dark and Decrepit, it takes that orangey yellow look away and it makes it more brown, more natural stain looking. I like to make sure the backs and the sides are finished as well. So I use that dark and decrepit on the back side of this shadow box, just in case someone wants to turn it over and use it for something else. It's all pretty and finished for them. After the dark and decrepit has dried, I'm using white swan and going over it with the DIY paint missing some spots just to give it a more distressed look and going over the entire face of this shadow box and when i'm finished with that some of the paint gets inside the slats so i take a bamboo bamboo skewer and i get that paint out of there so it doesn't dry with those slats connected
I absolutely love my letters from IOD. These are letter stamps and you can create signs with the stamps. And this one is farmhouse, or farmhand, excuse me. And I'm putting the letters on here, making a little garden sign. I think garden signs are going to be pretty popular this summer. So this one, I'm arranging the text to make a fun little sign. When I have my letters on there, I can use my thin mount, which is pretty amazing. It has lines on it, so you can line it up with the top and the sides of your project to make sure that it's straight. After you turn your letters over, if you need to reposition them, you certainly can because there's lines on the thin mount to make sure that your letters are square also. I'm using the IOD ink and ink pad, and I'm going to just go right over top of the letters with my black ink pad, squaring up those edges so you make sure that your text is in the same place that you planned it to be. And I will continue to stamp this sign with the IOD stamps and some other items. That little white tray that you see me put my stamps in, I fill that up with my used stamps and I soak that with water and Dawn dish soap. If you want your stamps to get clean, that is the ticket. Soak them overnight in there and they scrub right up spick and span. I'm adding a little bee on here for my Busy Bee Garden sign, and it comes from the Queen Bee IOD stamp set. This is another highly used stamp set of mine, and I'm just going to go ahead and ink him like I did the letters as well. After the sign has all dried, the ink is all dry, I go ahead with some 220 grit sandpaper to distress and make it look like it's a little bit more old than just a brand new sign. So I get some of that DIY paint off, plus I um, distress that IOD ink as well. You can um, age it as much as you want or as little as you want. Then I went and put some clear wax on it and also some dark wax, darkening it up and making it a little bit more aged.
Now we're going to tackle that crock and flower pot. I'm going in with tarnished pearl, which is a light gray color, and put some in a styrofoam bowl. Then we're going to go ahead and add some salt wash. If you don't have salt wash, you can use baking soda as well. And this is just a thickening agent for the DIY paint to give it some texture. You're going to mix it like you do cake batter. I kind of pound my bowl every once in a while to make the powder go down into the paint and stir it all up until it's completely mixed. Then you're going to paint it right onto your items and the idea is to get some nice brush strokes, some nice texture, cleaning up that area where this wheelbarrow of full of flowers was a little bit raised. So if I go over top of it with a heavy texture that you won't see that underneath. So this salt wash baking soda method, it really adds some homemade texture to your project. When that has all dried, I'm going in with the crockery set from IOD. This is a stamp set. It's another favorite of mine. I'm going to use the blue, the China blue. I haven't used it in a while, so I have to reprep my ink pad, and that's putting some ink on it, making it soak in, and then you can go ahead and right away use it. So that is, I've used this ink for forever. I'm going to go ahead and place my stamp on here to see where it should be placed and putting it on a thin mount, ink it up, and then it's a little tricky to get on a rounded surface. So you lay it down and don't wiggle it or you'll have a double image. So this one worked out really fine and it's blue with the white. I really like it. Um, before I wash my stamps, I also do wipe them with a baby wipe, which helps. Next up was Hay Sailor Paint, and this is a nice dark blue, which I thought would really accent this crock with doing the rim in that dark blue. It just to the dark blue stamp and that. The flower pot I went over with just a single coat of mermaid tail, just to give it some fun color for summer. And just pretty sporadic, not really covering the whole thing and letting some of that white pop through. When I went to put my stamp on, first I sanded it a little bit and it brought some of that tarnished pearl back through. When I went to put my stamp on, I had a little bit of trouble. I had a double image, plus I also stamped it upside down. So I show you in this video how I went about fixing my mistakes.
wanted to get it right Trying to find some balance in my life I never really put up a fight And now I'm losing sleep I used the clear wax to seal the crock and the flower pot. I just went into the clear wax with a, just a yucky old chippy brush. It's my favorite go-to for wax. And I put the clear wax on after everything had dried and I gave that a little bit of a sand. So it's got a nice age look to it. The clear wax you need to do the entire thing. And then while it's still wet, I went in with my DIY dark and decrepit dust. So this you can control a little bit as to where you put it. I took my finger and rubbed it in so it gave it a little bit of an age look, especially under that lip where it would probably be a little bit more shadowed and give it some depth. And this was a really fun project to do with that dark and decrepit dust. It's definitely easier to control than the dark wax. Next up was that metal cross. I do like the texture in the metal cross, the features that were on it. However, I wanted to give it a nice solid coat of Farm Fresh. This is Farm Fresh, but then I also wanted it to have a little bit of shadowing. So I went in with Apothecary. Farm Fresh and Apothecary are amazing together. There's some complementary colors within the same shade. Then it wasn't light enough yet, so I went in with some beadboard and just highlighted the tops of the ornate details on the cross. This probably got removed when I distressed it. Most of it did. So you can leave it like this and not distress it. It's really totally up to you. DIY paint comes off with a damp cloth. This is a baby wipe. So I'm bringing out some of the details in this cross with the baby wipe, bringing back some of that metal look to it. You have to seal up the DIY paint and in this method I chose to seal it up using clear and white wax. So first on with the clear everything gets an entire coat of clear wax and then while the clear wax is still wet you go in with the white and when that you put the white on and you take a dry cloth and you wipe back some of the white so that it only hangs around in the details.
We're giving this 80s checkerboard a facelift and I'm painting the entire thing with beadboard. I'm going right over top of that checkerboard. I do need to give it two coats because you can see that checkerboard coming through. I used apothecary and my JRV stencils and stencil brush and I wiped some of it off. You're going to want a drier brush than normal, especially this stamp because it does wiggle around. And so I found the method of going back and forth worked better for this grain sack stripe so that I didn't twirl the, the small detail in the center. And you can't hardly get into the corner for this one, but that's okay. I'm going to distress it anyway. And so I just did what needed to happen and kind of stayed away from that edge and distressed it back. The stenciling had a little bleed through, so I took some sandpaper and distressed it to get it to look more natural. Since I am going to put a transfer on here, I made sure all that dust was gone, and I went ahead and put a coat of Big Top onto the entire project because the transfers, they can stick right straight on the DIY paint, but it's best if you have a coat of clear on it before you use the transfer. So I used the label engineer stamp transfer and then also the painterly floral transfer. And both of these are a favorite of mine. I've been using this painterly floral for a while now. I have some left, but I ha I've done a lot of projects with this whole transfer. And then this label Empanera transfer, it has text. And I really like some text behind my flowers. I found that it just looks so much more French country, I guess, with the text behind it. So I went ahead and put that transfer on using the transfer stick. You just rub on the transfer and all of a sudden it will start to let loose from the backer and it will come right off onto your project. The lavender is quite long in the painterly florals set, so I cut them in half and I put the bottom half on first and then I went ahead and put the top half of the lavender on and made like a bunch of lavender. Just loving this moment Can always stay here forever 
Now this might seem like a really small detail, but I thought it was like the icing on the cake. So this is the knob toppers stamp. And I went ahead and got the knob topper that had the word Paris in it. And I stuck it on my sign using the thin mount to line it up in the corner so that I get it in the same spot. I went ahead and used some black ink, inked it up, stamped it down and then i wanted a circle around it the knob toppers don't have like the circle around it like the postage stamp would have so i found a top of a lid and actually made a circle around it it's a little on the big side i wish i could have found a smaller one but if you find a smaller circle just put that lid into the ink pad and you get some ink on all the sides of the lid and go ahead and put it right over top of your knob topper stamp and you'll make a circle around it so it's like a postage stamp. See? Icing on the cake, right? Using the clear wax and the dark and decrepit dust I also aged this sign in the corners as well frames skeleton key was the first one i was going to use with some beadboard and i like my frames to have a two-tone color look to them so i went ahead and put the skeleton key on the entire frame and highlighted the inside of the frame with some beadboard and blended those two colors together The next frame I did Farm Fresh and Apothecary. Just told you that those are a good combination, so I did the same thing. This Farm Fresh doesn't have as full coverage as the Skeleton Key, so I did need two coats of this. So one solid coat of Farm Fresh, let it dry, and then use a second coat of Farm Fresh. And after I got the second coat on, when it was still wet, I went in with the Apothecary and highlighted that center of the frame. After the frame was dry, I distressed it back down to that pretty wood, giving it a nice distressed look. I also finished the back side of it too, so that the back doesn't have any slopped paint on it. It's all nice and pretty if anyone sees it. And then I did find a print on Pinterest, a free download that I downloaded for this frame. And then it was too white. So I took my brown ink that I had in another video and I distressed it, making it look like the print was really old. I 
Okay, so I mixed up these frames. My print was supposed to go on my skeleton key one, and this board was supposed to go on the farm fresh one. So I had to straighten them back out. So this, with the print, I had to distress that frame and do the same aging process so that print would fit right in there. They are the same size, so it didn't really matter. And then I will show you how I fixed up just that white backer board on the other frame. Everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden And it shows if I'm honest You're the leaves in me Same type of look as we did on the square checkerboard frame, I did it on this backer board for this frame, except I used transfers and the JRV stencils. So this is a quick version of that same process. <laughs> 